right? So any trinomial that can be factorized in such a way that when you factorize it, you get two factors that are binomial and they are identical. It's called a perfect square trinomial. And there are only two of them. Okay? So, for this question, you are supposed to rearrange it this way. To create a perfect square trinomial, you can only create it here. There. That's where you could only create that perfect square trinomial. The 25y squared, you cannot do anything about it. And I want you to be aware that a perfect square trinomial is a perfect square is the first term and a perfect square is the last term. Okay? So if we rearrange this, you can write as 25y squared minus, I'm going to start with the 9m squared, then followed by the positive 6m, then the last term will be negative 1. Okay? That's where I'm going to start to rearrange the terms so that I can be able to create that perfect square trinomial. Then the next thing now, I already know that this 25y squared is also a perfect square. And if I factorize here, I must get two binomial factors that are identical. Okay? So I'm going to check out a common factor for the three terms. Okay? And that common factor is going to be a negative one. So I'll have 25y squared minus open bracket. That becomes 9m squared. I need to take out a common factor of negative one for me to create the perfect square trinomial. So 9m squared minus 6m plus one. Okay? Then... When you are factorizing the perfect square trinomial, it's so simple. All you have to do is find the square root of the first term. What's the square root of the first term? 3m. What's the square root of the last term? It's a positive 1, right? So when the perfect square trinomial starts with a negative sign between the first two terms, all you have to do is put the negative between the square root of the first term and the square root of the last term. So your two factors are going to be 3m three, three minus 1, all squared, when you factorize it. So this will become 25y squared minus, then you have 3m minus 1, all squared. Yes? Okay. When you factorize a perfect square trinomial, you don't have to think too much. First, find the square root of that. That's a 3m. Find the square root of that. Square root of 1 is a 1. Okay? But because when you write a factor, there must be a binomial. And there has to be a positive sign or negative, sorry, a subtraction sign or an addition sign between the two terms. To know which sign to put between between the square root of the first term and the square root of the third term. This sign here must be your clue. Okay? The first sign between the, uh, the first two terms of the trinomial is going to be the, the sign between the two factors in the binomial factor. So, between 3m and positive 1, just put one minus a or the subtraction sign. Remember, there are two types of perfect square trinomials. One has got a subtraction sign here, the other one has got an addition sign. Both of them, they have an addition here between the second and the third term. Okay? So if there was a plus here, then I'll put a plus here. You don't have to think too much. You don't have to think too much. Okay? Then, when you get here now, it, it can be a challenge to factorize it like this. So you can use the substitution method when you get here. So that you go back to what you are familiar with from grade 9. So factorizing this can be a challenge. So what you can do, introduce another variable which is not y, which is not m. So I can say let k be equal to 
3m minus 1. The reason why of introducing that variable is to make it simpler and make it familiar to what you were taught last year. Okay? Because most learners, they won't see a difference of two squares when it's like this. Okay? Then you substitute, so I'll say therefore, okay. Therefore, 25y squared minus k squared. Now it's familiar. Okay? But be aware that your final answer must not have k, it must have y and m. So I can factorize this and write here 5, 5y minus k times 5y plus k. Then I can just substitute, do my substitution. Where there is k, I have to put the 3m minus 1, where there is k. So I can simplify that further in. Right? My final answer is 5y k minus 3m k plus 1. Okay, remember, I am substituting now this 3m minus 1. Then I'll get 5y. Okay, I'm here now. 5y plus 3m k minus 1. And then you are done. So that's the final answer. Okay, generally when you are factorized, you must have two brackets, get generally, or sometimes you have one, but if you have got one, you have got a common vector outside the bracket. But generally you're supposed to have uh, two brackets. Okay, so okay. any question? How many of you are we able to do it from there on? Is there anybody who has got a question? Yes? Can, can you try to speak up so that I can hear you? Okay. I wanted to show you that a complex problem like that can be factorized in other ways that are not entirely correct. Okay. As I told you, if you want to put that question in a test or all the test, I can tell you some of the factorized ways that I showed you. Okay. 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 Because it's a complex question. So forget about it. The two solutions that I showed you yesterday, those are not the answer. Okay? I need you to be aware of that. There's only one answer to factorize this, and this is the answer. There's only one answer. It's a, it's a complex problem to solve. You have to know all your concepts of factorization for you to be able to do this question. And as I said, factorizing is a very important mathematical technique. It's very, very important. That's why it is taught in two grades, grade 9 and grade 10. Two grades you do factorization. Okay. I hope it's clear to everyone. There's only one answer. This is the answer. There's no other answer. Okay. If there's anyone who doesn't have any question, then let, let me carry on to the next one. So the next problem. Uh, 
8.10. So you have 24xy minus 3z squared plus 3y squared plus 48x squared. Okay. Again, now this one is uh, slightly more complex than the previous one. Okay. To factorize this, you also need to create a perfect square trinomial. Okay. But you may need to take out a common factor first. Okay. By the way, if you get any question on factorization, the first thing that you must look for is a common factor. Okay. If you get any question, if it's not there, it's fine. But always identify the common vector first. Okay, so here we do have a common vector. So I need to take out that common vector first before I get one. Right? What's the common vector? The three. So this will be three times eight xy minus z squared plus y squared plus 16x squared. That's my first step. Then, the next step is the creation of the perfect square trinomial from those four terms. Okay? Which one do you think is the odd one out among those four terms? Is the what? Is the z. Okay? Which means the other three terms, I need to rearrange them in such a way that I create my perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to do that, okay? So since the z has got a minus there, I'm going to take it to the far end, or the far right. Then I'm going to rewrite my perfect square trinomial starting with 16x squared. Remember, the term with the highest degree starts first in terms of the, the variables. So you know what a degree is? Okay. So 3 times... 16x squared, then followed by the term in xy, which will be positive 8xy. Then the last one will be positive y squared. So I have created the perfect square trinomial. And the perfect square trinomial, you can factorize it whilst your eyes are closed. Okay? Even if I come to your home, whilst you are fast asleep, I ask you from now on, can you factorize this perfect square trinomial? It should, it should not take you more than a second to do it. It has to be so quick like that. Okay? Then minus z squared. Okay? Now be aware that here I'm going to create two binomial factors that are identical. In the end, I'm going to have a difference of two squares because of this minus. Okay, so if I factorize this, I know that some learners, if they see x, y here, they see x squared, they see y squared, the brain shuts down. It's so simple. This middle term here, the 8xy, as I told you in the previous lesson when I spoke about trinomials, it's an automatic term. You don't have to stress much about it. It depends on the correct combination of factors of the first term and the last term. So you don't have to stress, how am I going to get 8xy? Get the factors of the first term right and the factors of the third term right and get the correct combination right. Then this middle term here will come out perfect. So, the square root of 16x, x squared, 4x. Square root of y squared, the y. There is a plus here, here, which means inside your binomial factor, the two terms must have an addition sign between them. If there was a minus here, then you put a minus between the two terms in the binomial factor. Then you are done. You don't have to stress anymore about that. 8x1. You don't have it. Okay? So, all right here, my 3 open bracket, 4x plus y, all squared, minus z squared. Okay? Now I'm back to 
difference of two squares here. Now, because of this, I can factorize straight away, but most learners, they won't be able to. So introduce a new variable. Okay? So we we'll say, let k be equal to 4x plus 1. Then once you do that, you can say, therefore, you can have 3, you just allow me to get on 3k. Okay, by the way, I need to put a square bracket there. Because this 3 affects the z square. So it will be 3k minus z squared, which will be equal to 3 times k minus z times k plus z. Okay, then you substitute the k, you put the 4x, the 4x plus y, so you get 3. So let me use a different color there quickly. So you have 3 times the k plus 4x plus y minus z. Now be aware that you are supposed to have a square bracket. Don't forget that. Okay? The 3 is affecting every term. So be aware of that. Okay? So I've got my 3. I need to put my square bracket there. Then I'm going to have 4x plus y plus z. And then you put the square bracket in the end. So that would be the final answer. The one in blue is the answer. Find the answer. Okay, there's only one answer, by the way. Okay. So, that's it. Thank you so much. Right. I need to collect my scripts.